A massive spike in crime in Milwaukee. This year, the number of homicides compared to last year jumping 140 percent. And the nation, including Congress, was warned just last month, the Milwaukee sheriff predicting that police would be under siege and that crime would surge. The cops in this country are not going to quit. But over time, when they start to worry, they look and they see that suspicious vehicle or they see that suspicious individual and say, maybe not today. I don't want this thing to go haywire on me. And the next thing you know, I'm one of those officers that, uh, who becomes a household name in America. That is going to a lag time, okay? I don't like to create hysteria, uh, but over time, I think it's going to have an effect on crime rates in those communities that need assertive policing the most, and that's our minority communities. And Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Thanks for having me. Sheriff, um, I'm looking at these numbers. Uh, January 1 to May 17th, the last year, there are 25 homicides in Milwaukee. That number in that same time period this year has jumped to 60, which is this 140% increase. I take it that your police force has not jumped 140% in manpower assigned to this, right? Right. There's a number of things going on here in Milwaukee. One is, is the uh, resource allocation. Budgets have been cut. I'm about 150 deputies down. The Milwaukee Police Department is about 300 officers down, plus they furloughed every Milwaukee police officer for three days each, which accounts for fewer um, uh, man hours, if you will, on routine patrol in these high crime areas, providing services for the people that need them the most. But you couple that with the fact that there has been this social engineering experiment going on with our criminal justice system. It's been masqueraded as sentencing reform, prison reform, criminal justice reform. It has tried to eliminate the use of jail and prison as a crime control tool. So cops go out, they arrest these career criminals, they're quickly spit back out onto the street into these communities to reoffend, to claim law-abiding people and, and other black people's lives. So you take that along with a, a, um, a fewer uh, risks that officers are taking because of this constant bashing uh, with that proactive policing or self-initiated policing, pulling that car over like, like I said, they're taking uh, fewer risks and you can't blame them for doing it. They're not quit. They will not quit on these communities, but they have to, you know, they're, they're, they're hesitating now as to whether they should pull that car over or jack those gang members up standing on the corner because something may go wrong, it ends up with a deadly force, and then like I said, the next thing you know, that you know, as an officer, you're the next household name being dragged through the slime across America as some racist or some killer. So how, how, do, you, how do you send your uh, police out, your law enforcement out every day? I mean, you've got the problem, you've got budget cuts, you've got furloughs, you've got crime increasing, you've got the fact that people are coming back to the street, you've got politicians hammering you when, I might add, they're the ones who are supposed to fix the problems in the community. You've got people who are around the country who suddenly, you know, are, they're blaming police for a lot of problems, you know, unfairly blaming them. So uh, what, do you, what do you say to uh, your rank and file when they go out there every day? Well, every day you have to continue as a law enforcement executive to uh, rebuild the morale, let them know that you, me and as the sheriff, that I have their back and I'll fight when they get into these situations where sometimes things go tragically wrong. You have to continue to fight for resources, but you have to appeal to that better nature that a cop has. Look, cops are type A personalities. They get into this, they, their, their engines are, are constantly running, they run at high RPMs, they want to go out there, they want to put their best foot forward to uh, go after the bad guys, the crooks make these communities a safer place. But once you shut that engine off through this constant barrage, it's very hard to restart. So my job as an executive is to continue to go to that political class and fight them, do the politics. And I tell my officers every day, let me worry, let me worry about the politics. You go out there with your training, with the Constitution, serve the community, and we'll get through this. But it's a very difficult time for the American police officer right now. Sheriff, thank you, and I, I hope the American people are listening. I hope Congress listened when you were here a couple of weeks ago testifying. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta.